Uh, my name is Brandy Parks. I'm the Assistant Utilities Director here at the City of Broken Arrow. Um, I've been in this role since October. Previously, I was in the Engineering and Construction Department. Um, I am going to go over the City of Broken Arrow's water supply um, and demand, um, kind of what we do at the city and what we produce, just an overview of the system, not getting too in depth. <coughs> Oh, there it goes. I was like, oh, here we go. Okay. So, originally, the city of Broken Arrow um, was fed by spring water. Um, and these natural springs, uh, if you know where Ray Harrell Park is, um, that was actually where originally our water came from. And as we grew um, to, in about 1960s, is when we started planning for a plant to produce water for the city. Um, so around 19, I guess it was 1967, the city built the first water treatment plant. And um, it is located where our plant is today, which is out on 71st Street going east towards the Verdigree River. Um, we do draw our water from the Verdigree River and we did at that time. Um, in 79, we um, constructed a 36 inch line that ran from um, Broken Arrow to Mid-America Industrial Park and Pryor um, and that's we drew our water from the Grand River there um, and had a partnership with UWAL which is the Oklahoma Ordinance Water Authority um, and with that I, it, in 1980 is when it became effective and then we um, began using that as a source um, and then it, Currently, we have the, the brand new water plant that we constructed in 2013 is when it was finished, went online in 2014. So um, a, the design began in 2006, construction began in 2012, so you can see it takes quite a while to um, plan and design and construct a plant. So um, with that, you know, you're building your where you're gonna hold your water, your intake to your water, all of that. So once we built our new plant, the, um, the UWA line, we took offline. So now we currently, in, or we still draw our water from the Verdigree River. Um, so just a little bit of the process overview. Um, what kind of sets us apart is we use membrane filters. Um, we have 132 modules per rack. They come in a very small pore size. Um, originally, they're for 20 million gallons a day to be treated. And then um, we've currently, we're, we're beyond that now. Um, and then with our disinfection, this is also kind of what sets us apart is we um, create our own um, so sodium hypochlorite. So as you can see, these, Okay. We make um, our salt through, and these are the chlorine contactor pipes that run up, and they run clear up to the ceiling. So they're pretty, pretty interesting. I wish I had an overall picture, but but we make um, a thousand pounds a day. Is kind of what's generated. We have three of those systems. And then our storage. So for the city's storage, we have um, a clear well, at, clear well at the water treatment plant and it holds six million gallons. Um, that is on site at the Verdigree River in the plant. So then the, um, in our system, we have six tanks, which totals 11 million gallons. We have three at Tiger Hill, um, one on Battle Creek, and then we have one at the First Baptist Church over kind of close to here um, and we have one south at New Orleans so we kind of have them spread out hopefully we'll have some more storage soon as we grow um, so this is kind of a distribution overview it's not correct as it's like it needs updated this is I think from 2018 um, so we have grown a lot more since then as you you can see that our water plants way out here and we, pu we push it all the way into town. So there's 
quite a bit of um, distribution lines that we have. So we have those main transmission lines that run to town, and then we have, I'd say, pushing now 700 miles, if not more, of water lines. Uh, so then I just kind of want to go over what our departments do, what we have, um, our employees in the water side of the utilities department. So the water treatment plant has around 15 employees um, and they operate and maintain the water treatment plant, which was a $70 million plant. Uh, and we're currently around 30 MGD um, is what we're rated for. So they're staffed 24-7, 365. So they're always, they're always um, at the plant and working and making sure that we have water as citizens. So, um, and then our average is around 12.3 and our max is 23.3 MGD. Um, for purchased water, we had around 64.1 MGD and that was, we had some issues during this year. Uh, that's why we did use quite a bit of Tulsa water. Okay, so we'll move to water distribution. So water distribution is our, um, guys who you see out in the field that are laying or working on our water line breaks anything like that who you call um you know if you have a leak or you see a leak um they maintain close to 700 miles of water mains um and that doesn't really include in your neighborhoods um over to we do have 10,000 isolation valves we're over that now for sure um, around 5,800 fire hydrants, I'd say maybe double that now. <laughs> um, so, and then around 40,000 water meters, and then we have our storage tanks. So the water distribution um, crews, they maintain all of these items. So that's, you know, if you have like a fire hydrant that's leaking, they do go out and they test the fire hydrants, um, they turn the valves, so anytime um, you see somebody out there pe popping a manhole, they're probably t turning a valve to make sure it works and it doesn't lock up. Um, and then our next department is repair and construction. There's around 13 guys that work for us. Um, these guys get out and they, re they will replace water lines, install water lines. They also do sewer. So um, any in-house design that we do in construction, um, these guys, you'll see them on, um, they, they currently do a lot of uh, old town water lines. So if you're out and about around downtown, that's um, our repair and construction crew, that's part of utilities. So that, um, one of these pictures right here is from the old Uwa line. I thought it was fun because it was our repair and construction team. So that was a, an issue is they maintain that Uwa line so they would drive or have to drive out to prior in the middle of the night and work most of the night through you know headlamps so <laughs> okay and then our metering department we have around 10 employees they maintain around 40,000 meters monthly um, these guys go out and do new meter accounts meter leaks um, they any kind of customer concerns that we may have if there's a leak which our guys can now go out and pull graphs and all that we're working towards the ami um which is getting very close um so they go out and they pull um you know if citizen says i think i have a leak they can pull that graph and see will you use this much water and see when it spikes when it doesn't um so they also do the like you know, meter turnoffs, meter turn on, so that's a big part of it. Um, these guys are one of the busiest. Oh man, I flew through that. You got any questions? Do the meter readers actually read meters? So right now we have a drive-by system. So um, it, when they drive by, it populates on their computer from your um, what what your meter code is and that, that links to your account. So we do have some that they'll go out and read manually, but most of it's drive-by, and we're looking to switch to um, more of an, an, a tower system, so it'll read from a tower, and then um, 
that that will cut down a lot on having to do the drive-bys, but they can pull like 90, 95 days worth of data. That's what the little white disk is. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Um, with all the construction, all the construction in Pocono, is there ever a fear of not having enough water? No. We have our plant manager, and she's amazing. Um, so we have, with the city, we, produce, we can produce over 30 million gallons a day. We have 11 storage tanks, and with that, DEQ requires we have so much storage in our system for any kind of fire flows, stuff like that. So we, as a city, we're held reliable to have that storage. And then we also have um, a connection with the city of Tulsa, so we can draw water from them and buy water. Um, we do have a connection with rural water district, but we mainly supply rural water when they need. Um, so we plan a lot and make sure that, you know, if you turn a faucet, it's not going to not have water. So as a city, I think we have a great process. Possibly, yeah. I can't say yes or no, because I, um, you know, that will be part of the rate study that the city does. When you installed your new meters, my house, my water bill doubled. Yeah, and that would be something that would be programmed, and it would have been shared through the city um, at the council meetings. They bring everything to council to approve. No, so they, they wear out and they don't, um, they don't read accurately, so it may not have been registering much at all. Um, so with the new meters being installed, it may correct that. And you see that a lot of the times, and that's, you know, one of the programs that these meter reader guys do. They have certain guys that go out and change out registers to make sure we're trying to get reading, reading get an appropriate reading. Um, 